Hey guys, we're going to touch on 12 topics in this video, top to bottom. Game of Thrones, Professor X, Bran Stark is not marked anymore. I think that's a common misconception. Crossing the wall will not allow the Night King to cross. If it did, Bran would not cross. Come on, he's a hero, not a killer. Plus, if it was that easy, the Night King would not have been trying to kill Bran. I prefer the theory that the Night King was able to get past the magic around Blood Raven's cave since he touched Bran while Bran was having a vision from inside of the cave. So in order to cross past the wall, the Night King would have to touch Bran while Bran is having a vision from south of the wall. If you didn't catch it, we see the raven's eye turn white, showing us that Bran is skin changing the raven. And in case you didn't know, we learned from Dance of Dragons Bran 3 that all the ravens have singers inside of them. By singers, I mean dead children of the forest. Check out the two videos on the children of the forest that we made last week if you need a refresher. Beric does not use wildfire on his sword. That's what Thoros Amir does. Wildfire is green. Beric lights his sword on fire with his own blood. Now don't get me wrong, I don't believe in a lore, but I absolutely believe in blood magic and fire magic, and Beric is a living example of fire magic. The dude does not eat or sleep. He cannot even remember where his own castle is or what color hair his fiance had. He has been resurrected six times so far, and each time, he loses a piece of himself. The silver lining is that he was reborn for this fight, so to say, versus the whites. And since his blood is fire magic, I expect him to be able to top down the white walkers similar to Valyrian steel and dragonglass. With that said, Beric has died six times already, and that's pointed out for a reason. Seven is an important number in this story. Faith of the Seven, Song of the Seven, the background score of this trailer is called Light of the Seven. Basically, we should expect him to die, and the seventh time will be his last. Unfortunately, I think Doros is going to go down with him since it's foreshadowed in the books. The question is, will Beric go down swinging, or will he sacrifice his own life to raise someone from the dead by giving them his fire, so to say? The line we hear Sansa say about the lone wolf dying and the pack surviving is actually something that Ned says to Arya in the books during this scene from Season 1, Episode 3. He's trying to warn her that King's Landing's dangerous. The Last Hero. I'm sure you've heard it by now. But legend has it that the last hero from the long night thousands of years ago had 12 companions. Since history seems to repeat itself, or maybe the legend was born before it ever happened, I expect Jon to head north with 12 companions. So who are they? We see Jon, Sandor, Tormund, and Beric fighting. There's four. Since Beric's there, we can assume Thoros is as well. It looks like Bran and Potter are Castle Black, so they are likely candidates. Three wild cards are Dolores Ed, Gendry, and Davos. I can see Dolores Ed holding down the fort at Castle Black. Either way, we have a few openings. Maybe they will be filled at random dudes, some of which will die in the mayhem. Let's take a look at that mayhem. We see them fighting on top of a plateau, including John. But we also see a circle of 12, which makes me think that John is not in this circle since I expect 13 people to head north. I'm hoping that the new resurrected Stone Cold John fights his way over to the Night King to try to take him out. Especially since we see a shot of John Solo with a plateau in the background and everyone else either dead or gone. And there's fire, which may have come from dragons or a very savage Beric Dondarrion. And here's a cool theory. We see John on a horse, so some people believe that Benjen arrives in the nick of time and gives John his horse to escape. I like that one. The crowd at King's Landing is cheering. Considering that Cersei just blew up the Great Sept of Baylor and a ton of people, I find it hard to believe that they are cheering for her. Plus, I don't think she leaves the Red Keep too often nowadays, so my guess is that they are cheering for Danny or an envoy that Danny has sent to chat with Cersei. Since we see the Hound in the Dragon Pit, that seems like the spot where the conversation will go down. Maybe Clegane Bowl, but I doubt it, at least not yet. I'm going to do a lore video on the Dragon Pit next week. Yorin appears to be approaching King's Landing in daylight, which is pretty good evidence that he aligns with Cersei. The sea battle looks cool. The fire in the last trailer looked like dragon fire, but in this one, we can tell that it's not. Either Yorin truly is the storm, and the sky is raining fireballs, or maybe this thing on his boat behind him is some sort of fire weapon. We see both Yorin and Yara kick an arse, and later we see Yorin and Theon at a beach, which tells us that Theon was taken prisoner. We hear John tell someone that they have fought together for centuries against a common enemy despite having differences, so he is asking for help. The people in the North already have his back, so who is someone with differences that he would want to recruit? My guess is that an Icy Stark is asking a fiery Targaryen that has three huge dragons, and they might be meeting for the first time in this shot here. We see Dragonstone behind Danny and Drogon. This would be a very warm welcome if you catch my drift, and how cool would it be if Ghost is standing right in front of Drogon, growling at him? Now looks like a Grey Worm's battle. I used to think that this would take place at Highgarden since the banner seemed cheesy, like something you would hang if you take over a castle. Same with the sigils, they look to be painted on, but I expected Casterly Rock to be very ornate. But Highgarden isn't located on the ocean, and in this shot we see a cavern in the background. We also see Unsullied opening the gates for their buddies, so my guess is that Grey Worm and a Navy SEAL force sneak into the caverns down below, kill some guards, and then open the gates for the rest of the army to take over the castle. And since they keep reminding us that Missandei and Grey Worm are lovebirds, it seems likely that they're setting them up to die. The battle out on the field of fire, seven hells, we finally get to see a shield wall. If you haven't tried it, give The Last Kingdom a shot, it's a fun show on Netflix. Their shield wall scenes are very intimate, really cool. 
Maybe that's why we saw Dothraki jumping off their horses in the last trailer. They might be jumping over the shield wall. That would be gnarly. We see Jamie charging, which reminds me. We see Tyrion outside a lot, talking with the Tree of Wall. My guess is that he is reflecting on his relationship with Jamie since he killed Tywin, and the fact that he's about to go to war versus his brother. I'm hoping that eventually, they hug it out. And Drogon is huge. I plan on doing a better dragon size video next week based on some great feedback that I received from many of you. I'm going to change the growth rate assumption to be based off of mass instead of wingspan and also change the growth rate assumption from constant to declining for various reasons. And for the record, the producer said that the dragons at the end of the season will be the size of DC-9s, not 747s. Still huge, but there's a big difference. I'll throw a link to that interview in this video's description. Speaking of which, from now on, I'm going to be periodically updating video descriptions to have corrections and additions based off of your awesome feedback. And when it's called for, like the why didn't Ned demand a trial by combat video, I'll make an updated video based on the feedback from you wizards. And be polite to people. We have a one strike policy here at Bridge 4. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. If you're a negative Nancy, you will get blocked. Let me know in the comments what I missed or got wrong with this trailer. Hit subscribe if you aren't already, and most importantly, have a great day. Eat clean, train dirty, pay it forward, keep smiling, kick some ass, and fuck cancer. I'm going to be working with former UFC middleweight Dan Miller and doing fundraisers soon for the Children's Hospital of Pennsylvania, Morristown Hospital, and polycystic kidney disease, in case anyone is interested. I have a fun idea. Stay tuned.